Hello everyone, my name is Brendan Snyder. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the review for the Rolling Stones Tattoo You Deluxe Edition. So 18th studio album in the US and originally released in 1981, which means it's celebrating its 40th anniversary this year. And while the album itself is fantastic, the real meat and potatoes of this thing here is a bonus disc called Lost and Found, which features nine unreleased recordings that have been embellished today. We're gonna get into all of that in just a moment, but if you are new to my channel and haven't already hit the subscribe button, please click the button. Also leave a comment, hit like, all those things help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus, by subscribing, you'll be able to stay up to date on all that's going on in the world of music, just like this with the Rolling Stones Tattoo You Deluxe Edition, 40th anniversary edition of this great album. And so I wanna jump back a bit and do a little bit of history for you um, on these guys. I mean, they've been around near 60 years now, forming back in 1962, so 59 long years these guys have been together. They led the British invasion, playing some early blues-inspired rock and roll, but they also helped pioneer a heavier, grittier sound that would ultimately become known as hard rock. And they released their first album in 1964 and even found early success with some of their own originals, which is kind of an unheard of thing back then. A lot of the times it was covers or written by other people, which even the Stones did some of that. But I Can't Get No Satisfaction in 1965 was a hit, along with Paint It Black in 1966. And they continued this right through the 60s. And when most of their counterparts were breaking up towards the end of the 60s and into the 70s, the Rolling Stones just continued right on. And between 1964 and 1980, they released 15 studio albums in Britain and 17 studio albums in the US. And that's why you might sometimes hear a different album number when someone's talking about it. Just depends on where they're from and uh, which uh, lineage they're following, either from the UK or the US. And so at the beginning of the 80s though, the Rolling Stones were still one of the biggest bands around. And in 1981, they released Tattoo You, the album we're talking about here. So this album was mostly comprised of studio outtakes and unused recordings that date all the way back to the early 1970s, uh, as far back as Goat's Head Soup, which was nine years earlier. That time, that was a long time. I mean, now with 59 years that they've been around, nine years is nothing, but nine years at that time was kind of a big deal to be going that far back in their catalog. The album itself, though, did feature two of its biggest hits, Start Me Up, which went all the way to number two on the Billboard Hot 100 singles chart, and Waiting on a Friend, the ballad, which went to number 13 on the Billboard Hot 100 singles chart as well. So the thing was with this album here, due to touring obligations and uh, personal feuding and things like that that was going on with each of the members, it made it difficult for these guys to be able to book enough time and get into the studio to dedicate in order to make a whole brand new album. So their production team came up with this great idea. They were gonna go back into the archives and sift through outtakes, unused recordings, things of that nature, find them, put them together, polish them off and finish them off as a new album. Kind of a cool thing to do. A lot of bands are doing that these days, but this was a new thing back then. And uh, despite songs not being newly written at the time for the album, it's still actually one of their strongest albums in their catalog, at least in my opinion. And it also provide, proved, I should say, to be a critical and commercial success for the band, climbing all the way to the top of the Billboard 200 album charts. So being at number one and then having those hits that came off of it from an album that was just pieced together, pretty amazing, ultimately being certified for four times platinum in the US. And so here we are with the 40th anniversary deluxe edition of this thing. And, um, you know, we all know and love the album itself, Tattoo You. It is an amazing album. It's got a brand new remaster here and it sounds great. But the bonus disc is where it's at in terms of this. So it's called Lost and Found. They've even given it a name. And it, that thing here is what I think is the real interest. It features nine unreleased recordings, five original tracks, three covers, and an early version of the song Start Me Up but it's a reggae-tinged edition, and I like it a lot, actually. Don't immediately recognize it when it first comes on. A lot of these songs that are on this bonus disc were only instrumental takes of things or sketch ideas, and so once again, the band went back in and finished off these recordings. So you've got these tracks that are 40, maybe 50 years old, in terms of how far back they went and dug around with these things, finishing them off today, just recently adding new vocals and additional instrumentation to these things. So all nine of these songs 
are really quite lively. They sound fantastic. I mean, in my opinion, they sound like they've been recorded brand new, but they've got a raw edge to them, like the classic Rolling Stones sound that we all know and love. Any of these songs I do think easily could have made the Tattoo You album. In particular, track number one, Living in the Heart of Love. That song right there is a great straight ahead rocker. It was the first single released off it, so a lot of you probably already know that one, but I think it was done in classic Rolling Stones fashion. Had it been released 40 years ago, it would have been a hit for these guys. And then track number seven, Come to the Ball, a really great one. This is a fantastic, funky rocker that was recovered from the Some Girl sessions that they did. And then number eight, Fast Talking, Slow Walking, nice piano ballad that I think easily could have sat next to their big hit, Waiting on a Friend, would have gone great. So any of these three songs, just absolutely amazing. So let's take a look at this album. Here's the front cover. I mean, we all know the front cover of it, but this thing here, just really great the way it's been done. It is a triple gatefold style like that. You gotta blow up on the tattoo stuff and this great logo that's there. Uh, booklets in the front part of this thing here, and I'm gonna pull that out and I will go through that with you in just a moment. I do wanna point this out. My only complaint on this whole thing is they put the main disc right in the middle of it. If you can see it there, I can barely get this thing out. Very difficult, you guys know what I'm talking about. They do put the disc that I'm gonna be listening to a lot right here at the end though and it slides in, but there's nothing that stops it from sliding all the way through. I'm kind of pushing it through with my finger and you can see it pop out there. Anyways, that's the nature of some of these things. But some music that we love, so we're gonna focus on that. The booklet though, really good, well done. They pull all of the album art, but then they do a beautiful write up song by song, track by track, with some cool photos and things that are in there going through the original album itself. Look at that photo, it's fantastic. And uh, then they spend some time on the disc, it's called Lost and Found, so you actually get to know about all of that too. It's really great, it's well done. I like this thing a lot. I have to say I'm very happy. I chose not to go for the big box set that has two additional discs in it of live recordings from Still Life. You know, it's another recording, it's one from uh, Wembley, I believe, in the UK. For me, at least, I chose to focus just on the two disc as I am a big fan of these unreleased songs here and really wanted to get those into my collection. So bottom line on this thing here, um, you know, while it's great to get the new remaster of Tattoo You, the classic album in here, as I said, it's these nine unreleased tracks that are the real gems, essentially making for a new album because they went in and finished it off, new vocals, guitars, etc. My only complaint besides that packaging on is I actually wish they had released it as a brand new standalone album, but of course we gotta take it as it comes. I do think that any of the songs that are on here are just outstanding. Maybe not all as good as Tattoo You, but definitely good stuff nonetheless. Worth a listen, worth some enjoyment on this stuff here. And I would certainly say that, uh, you know, with the band fast approaching 60 here, this could be the last new material we get from them. So certainly go out, enjoy it. Have a great one. I'll talk to you all real soon. Do check the description for links to related videos. And if you enjoyed this, share it out on social media. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.